And in this video, we're going to talk about a concept in chemistry um, that revolves around how molecules can have the same chemical formula but have different structures. And when that happens, we call those molecules isomers. So if you wrote them out um, in a chemical formula, for example, this butane, you could write as C4H8. And this isobutane, exact same molecule, C4H8. The number of carbons and hydrogens isn't changing, but the arrangement of the atoms within the molecule is changing some way. And so that is your most basic definition of an isomer. The chemical formula is the same, but something about the actual structure or shape of the molecule is different. And this can happen in a few different ways. So structural isomers, exactly like it sounds, the structure or the arrangement of bonds is what's different. In this butane molecule, all the carbons are arranged in a nice linear chain, and the hydrogens come off of them um, in about the most simple conformation you could imagine. In isobutane, this fourth carbon is branched off of the middle one. And so even though the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens doesn't change, the arrangement is different enough that it's a different molecule. It has different properties. You can expect changes in its melting point or boiling point or the reactions that it participates in. Right? The second way this can happen is geometric isomers. When this happens, the arrangement of the bonds doesn't really change, right? We still have carbon, 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 single bonds here, double bond here. That doesn't really change on the other side in the second version of the molecule. What does change is the arrangement of those um, atoms around the double bond, okay? So when you have a double bond, they're not flexible and they can't spin. And so these two carbons are locked in place. Right, these methyl groups, right, CH3 is a methyl group. If they're both pointing the same direction, we say that this is the cis conformation of the molecule. If the methyl groups are pointing opposite directions, like you see over here, then we say that's the trans conformation. The reason this matters is molecules and the way they behave are very, very heavily dependent on shape. And so in biology, a lot of these molecules are going to be recognized by enzymes in chemical reactions. If an enzyme recognizes the cis version of the molecule, the shape of the trans one is different enough that that enzyme isn't going to recognize it anymore. A good example of this is um, some drugs like ibuprofen. When you buy a bottle of ibuprofen pills, half of the molecules in that pill are the cis version and half of them are the trans version. Now, it's too difficult to separate them out for each other, and it'd be very, very costly. And so we just leave them together, even though only half of the molecules in the pill are able to bind the receptor and actually cause pain relief. The other half don't do anything, but um, it's too difficult to tell the difference between them and separate them apart in the factory. Okay. The third version of this that you'll see is something called an enantiomer. In this case, it's not about a double bond in which direction the side chains are pointing. Um, it's all about mirror images of each other. And so in this case, we have a central carbon and four different other atoms or side groups surrounding it. doesn't really matter what they are. They just have to be different. And so fluorine, bromine, chlorine, and hydrogen are four different things. And if you draw a line down here and pretend that this was a mirror, these L and D isomers are just mirror images of each other. So much like a pair of gloves are mirror images, right? They both have a thumb and four fingers. They look like the same thing, but if you try to put your left hand in a right glove, it becomes clear that they don't really match up perfectly. And so pay attention to that central carbon. If there are four different things attached around that carbon, then it's possible to have an enantiomer, a mirror image version of it. If you have four attachments, but two of them are the same, it doesn't work anymore, um, and you won't get the mirror image version of it. Uh, when you move on to a chemistry class at some point, the details of that will be uh, a lot more meaningful. Um, for right now, just be ready to recognize that that exists. Okay, so let's do some examples. In biology, one place where cis versus trans isomers come into play is with fats. So you've probably heard the phrase trans fats because it's a type of fatty acid molecule that's very harmful to people's health. The thing that that means is when we draw out these fatty acid chains, so this space filling model, the black um, tube down the middle represents carbons and all of the white balls represent hydrogens. So this molecule would actually 
look something like this if we were to draw it out, right? And all of the open bonding sites, remember carbon always forms four bonds total. And so when you see a chain like this, connect the carbons together, and then all of the open bonding sites to get up to four for each carbon are just filled by hydrogens. When we say that this is um, this is a saturated fat, it's saturated with carbons and hydrogens, all of the bonds between carbons are single bonds. There are no um, isomers for this because um, they all point the same direction. As soon as you have a double bond introduced, right, this would be the site of the double bond. Once you have a double bond in place, now you can have a cis or a trans version. Um, this happens to be the cis version of oleic acid because these carbons, right, coming off of the double bonded carbon are both pointing down in the same direction, right? If it was all trans, right, it will look like this where the chain is straight. And so this makes a difference for the physiology of membranes. It makes a difference for which enzymes can recognize that molecule, right? And so pay close attention to this um, when you get to membrane physiology, right? Because they have different properties depending on whether you put um, the cis or the trans version of a fatty acid in that membrane. All right. In enantiomers, this is just a more detailed view of what you're seeing. So same thing that we saw before. Um, they're showing you the example of handedness, right? So this is the mirror image that we saw before, central carbon, one, two, three, four different um, atoms or side molecules attached to that carbon. And so in their analogy, this hydrogen is kind of like this person's thumb. On this side, it's over here. So just like if you try to take a right-handed glove and put it on the left hand, if you try to take this molecule and superimpose it on top of that one, there's no way to make it work, right? No matter how you twist and rotate and align these molecules, they won't ever perfectly line up with each other, which explains why when you try to do enzymatic reactions, is that if the enzyme recognizes the L isomer, it won't recognize the D and vice versa because enzymes in their substrates have to fit together perfectly like puzzle pieces. And if the puzzle piece is a mirror image of what it's supposed to be, then you wouldn't expect those pieces to fit together correctly. So this is a concept that you can sort of tuck into your knowledge base for both bio and chem. It'll serve you well in the future. And uh, yeah, um, flag the playlist, subscribe to the channel so you get all the updates. Um, this is the last um, video for chapter two. And in the next one, we'll be moving on to new information, chapter three.